Hello everyone, today is Thursday, April 9th, 2020. And this is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here, attending live. I appreciate that. And if you're watching a recording, thanks, of course, to you too. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, current market conditions, kind of the elephant in the room. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, keep them relative to the slides, just so my ADD doesn't kick in. That's for your benefit, believe me. <laughs> I go off on enough rants uh, on my own. And your favorite stock picks, if you don't mind, wait until we get to the charts for those, and that's just for your benefit, so to make sure I see them. And also, for your benefit, ask about one stock at a time and hit return. That way I know which ones have been covered. Otherwise, we might not get them all covered. So the question is, has the market bottomed? I want to continue on from my presentation that I did yesterday for StockCharts.com. So you will see a little bit of that overlap. And then more on where bad things happen. And that'll make sense in a minute. That's something we've been talking about lately. And bear markets, and that should be harder than they look, not here than they look. And that'll make sense too. And you probably already know what I'm going to say there. This is flame screen, as you know, you could lose my trading wars off to sum it up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I stole that from Greg Morris. So it's a very fluid situation, obviously. So those who are new to the show, likely those obviously watching the recordings, if you go to Bear Market 2020 updates, you can get the latest. And usually, by the way, the latest is on the front page too. But if you want to catch up, and there's some good stuff in there if I say so myself. So just check that out on the menu on my website. So the $64,000 question is, when will the market bottom? Well, one thing I was looking at earlier this week is prior tops and bottoms. And looking at the last couple of bear markets that we've had, we had a top, obviously, in the bottom. And then we had a top again in 2008 and then a bottom in 2009. And the market went down for a long time and bottomed out for a long time, as you'll see in one second. Now we have a top, or what appears to be a top, obviously, in place. I would call it a top, actually. And then a lot of people are looking for a bottom. And, and I don't blame them, you know, and, and I hope things, I hope the market goes right back up. I, I'd like to take a few more profits on my short side first, or at least get off the hook on some of these, right? Uh, but deep down, I do want the market to go up. I think it's good for everyone in general, the United States and people with their 401ks, et cetera. But usually, if you know me, when it comes to these transitional patterns, such as a first thrust or a bow tie, it's some other things like that. In other words, emerging trend patterns, I like those to happen at either all time highs, like we just saw, we had some emerging trend patterns to the downside. And we still do. We'll take a look at some of those that are still working. And on the upside, major, major, major bottoms. So we had like a 13-year low in 2009. So that's a pretty significant low. That's almost, what, a decade and a half? So that's the idea with these emerging trend or transitional patterns. So I kind of see it right now as a bottom at a top. Now, Mark could do whatever it wants. Obviously, we snap right back in 2019 and without digressing too far as i've been saying at nauseam i think that taught a lot of people to be really bad traders or if you want to call them investors and as i've said at nauseam guy in a u-haul place it's like uh man i'm glad i held on through that slide i wish i'd have bought more at the bottom you know it's like well you know that'll work until it don't so my point here is a bottom at a top is less likely then some sort of major bottoming process. So if we go back to 2000, notice that the market dropped for two and a half years. It lost 50% of its value. So that's one thing I'm kind of backing into too. Is the 30% drop enough or is the market gonna lose half of its value once again like it has in the prior two bear markets? and Or maybe a little bit more as it, as it has before. Remember, the NASDAQ was down nearly 80% in 2000. And we were hitting five-year plus lows. Now, I didn't realize we were hitting three-year lows. I did see some things about the, the Trump rally being erased in the Dow. So in the back of my mind, I knew we were at probably pretty close to that in the S&P too. But 
when I actually put these presentations together, it made me realize that, wow, we are at three-year lows. So that is somewhat significant. So my point here is that you do need to be, for a bottom, I think, at a fairly major low. And what's kind of interesting is notice the 10% line, just for future reference, notice that dropped along with price because the market took so long to bottom out and it went down for a long time before it began to bottom out. So that 2002, 2003 low, it took about a year or so to complete and something with a lot of lag in it, which we're gonna to get to in a few minutes, talk a little bit about lag, but something with a lot of lag in it actually works fairly well, like a weekly bow tie, for instance, because the moving averages have time to catch up. On this particular case, notice that the 10% line caught up to price. And we'll beat the dead horse on that in just one second. So if we go back to 2007, now 2007 was a really gradual rollover. Everybody goes on and on about how bad the bear market was in 2009, 2008, but that rollover really started late fall of 2007. And as I've said quite often, back then when the market was making marginal new highs back in October or so, I couldn't find a long setup, a decent long setup to save my life. And I apologize to my clients for shorting and putting out short recommendations. But anyway, it took a year and a half, of more, or the market went down for a year and a half, lost half its value once again. And that was a really significant low. As I said a little while ago, it was hitting 13 year plus lows before it did bottom out. A little bit more of a V-shaped recovery on that one, but it was at 13 year lows. Now, again, we're at three year lows here. And so far, we're just a few weeks off the, and I put in there A low. I think we're just a few weeks off of A low right now. Now, these V-shaped recoveries at high levels are really hard to sustain. If you think about it, the market goes straight back up, and I'm going to confuse the issue with facts here in just a few minutes, but if it goes straight back up, those who held through the whole thing or those who bought late in the game will be looking to get out at break even. The Johnny come lately, so to speak. And then the widows, the orphans, and soon to be retirees might be looking to mitigate some damage on the retrace rally. I was contacted, as I've been saying quite a bit, by a family member with a bit of a panic because a conservative portfolio was getting whacked, believe it or not, harder than the market. We talked about that quite a bit, but these fundamental funds and big cap stocks. Well, guess what? The bigger they are, the harder they fall when you get into a mess like this. Now, my other big concern is, and this is something that's impossible to quantify, so is the widows and orphans and things like that. But there's a lot of leverage and a lot of derivatives out there, and there's gonna be some liquidity unwinding that I think is going to happen throughout this whole process. And I think that's going to make it really hard for us just to have a do-over here. But hey, you know what? The market can do whatever it wants. So I believe my point that I'm trying to get to is it's complicated. These things take time to unwind. And again, I doubt it's going to be a do-over. Now, with that said, let's not think too much and let's watch for signs and signals. Now we've talked quite a bit about the 10% system, 10% TFM system that is. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of details on that other than the fact that there is a little whipsaw filter in here that you have to have two weeks of daylight above the 50 week moving average and be above the 10% line. But the point I wanted to make here just from a simpler standpoint is Notice you have bull markets above the 10% line and bear markets below the 10% line. And um, I think it was Baleo and Gayard, which talked about how bad things happen below 
the 200 day moving average. Well, that's kind of inspired me. And that's from a presentation that Arthur Hill did for the, it's also in the bear market updates, the um, navigating a bear market special that stock charts put out. The point is, and for those who, this, if this is your first presentation, the 10% line is simply the 50 week closing high, which is in blue, less 10%, okay? And my point early on before I heard about the research of Baleo and Gayard was that if a market is gonna drop 50%, it's going to drop 10% first, okay? The old ABCs of technical analysis. If a market is gonna go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, it's gonna to have to pass through B on its way to C. Now it's always, it's not always as easy as simply buying or selling at B, but if you keep that in mind, you're gonna do a lot better than trying to pick bottoms or fight the trend. Now, again, I do have a little bit of whipsaw filter requiring a little bit of daylight with the 50 week moving average. But just looking at this 10% line in and of itself, you will get a little bit of whipsaw, but it will also help to keep you on the wrong side of the market. So if you didn't do anything whatsoever, and I'm gonna show you another little indicator to look at in just one second here that's very similar to this but if all you did was or i should say when the market crosses below that 10 percent threshold that's when you need to start rethinking things a little bit i'm not saying rush out and dump all your investments if you have investments and you're not a trader type but start thinking about where you might be looking to get out to mitigate the damages and then the, the 2019 slide is a lot worse than it looks on the charts when you kind of squint your eyes and look at a long-term chart like this. So my point is, that was nothing to sneeze at. And then again, obviously we had this big slide recently. Now we zoom in, it's a little bit more clearer. You can see the 10% line, obviously trailing 10% below the blue line. The green line is a 10% line. The blue line is a 50 week closing high. And as long as the market is making new closing highs, notice that line tends to rise. Now, according to the system, we have to be but we have to be back above the green line, the 10% line, to get long. Now, this is just one of many things I look at. Okay, so this isn't the only thing I'm looking at, but it's one thing that's been kind of cool since I've released it a couple of years ago, and I've been really having a lot of fun playing with it. But the one thing I noticed recently is it's gonna take a long time for that line to begin to drop. So we've already gone about eight weeks into this, okay, since that 52 week high. So it's not gonna drop for another 42 weeks. That 10% line is gonna stay at pretty high levels. Now, if you go back and look at this slide where I was talking about the prior bear markets, the bear markets lasted long enough to where that 10% line began to drop. But right now, it's like you almost have to get all the way near the old highs, or at least 10% away from those old highs before you would get a new signal. So I think it's going to take time for that line to start dropping, or obviously the market would have to have the mother of all rallies to trigger a signal. So it's going to be fun to watch that unfold. You know, when you do these systems and you go back in time and you're one week, two week, three week, four week, you know, before you know it, you go through 50 or 60 weeks in this in this back testing, okay? And you're looking at it, and I like to do my testing empirically and by hand. I used to program a lot of trading systems. I don't really program systems anymore. I just kind of do it by hand because I think you get a better feel for things. But it's one thing to go back in time and see it took two years for a signal to trigger. It's another thing to sit around and wait two years. So it's gonna be kind of an interesting experiment to watch that in, in real time. Okay, Salvatore is asking 10% uh, stop versus 10% line. Uh, the 10%, it's not really a stop, it's just a, a reference, a price reference. And I'm using 10% of the S&P 500. You would have to use different parameters and other stocks and adjust accordingly. 
uh, 10% just seems to work really well in the S&P 500. But as I often say, a biotech might move 10% in one afternoon or in 10 minutes in this market, right? So it's just the 50-week high times 0.90, if you want to look at it like that, or a 50-week high less 10%. And that's all that is. Now, as I said earlier, hopefully that answers your question. If not, I'll be happy to readdress it. One thing I was thinking about, in some cases, lag is, is actually okay. Now, back in the day when I used to wake up really, really early and program trading systems, as opposed to wake up early and look at charts and do research and all those other things I do now, I was always trying to get the lag out. And there were a lot of people out there selling indicators that they claim didn't have lag. Well, there's no such thing. It's a price-based indicator that's going to have lag. But one thing I'm wondering is, is some lag okay? And it might prevent you from chasing your own tail. So let's say you had a system that, that really didn't have a whole lot of lag, okay? Well, it gets you long, but guess what? The market rolls right back over because the market was just kind of spiking up or whatever, and then it rolls right back over. So you would have gotten whipsawed into this system that doesn't have a lot of lag. Now, if you do have some lag in your system, something like a, a moving average bow tie or something, and an extreme example, the 10% TFM system, it might give the market time to readjust. So all those zigs and zags in between where a market is chopping back and forth, those big old crazy swings, kind of like we're seeing right now, you would just stay out of all that mess and let everybody else fight it out. Kind of reminds me of the Livermore quote all the time when you're not trading and people are fighting it out in the market, they're building the base for your new venture. Paraphrasing him, obviously. Now, getting back to the bad things happening, if you do have some lag, would it help? to avoid some of those bad things happening. In other words, a buy signal with a little bit of lag. And as I talked about last week, once a market drops 10%, you need to be cautious because it could go 20%, 30%, 40%, or 50% or more, as it has fairly often over the last 120 something years. Now, 2009, obviously we lost half of the value in the S&P 500. And in 2020, we're down, if I zoom in on that, it's kind of hard to see, but we're down over 30% from the market peak. And so you can see once you lose 10%, you could easily lose a lot more. No guarantees, right? That, you know, sometimes maybe it'll go right back up. But I think, my point here is that you have to be really careful once an index like the S&P loses 10%. So you definitely want to wait for signals to occur. Now, the daily bow tie, the moving averages are beginning to come together. So that's a 10-day simple, 20-day exponential, 30-day exponential. And I think if all you did was pay attention to those moving averages, and if the 10's above the 20 and the 20's above the 30, you would mostly want to be long a market. And if they flip-flopped over, maybe the trend has changed. And let's say the 30 is now greater than the 20, and the 20 is now greater than the 10. Or if you prefer, the 10 is less than the 20, and the 20 is less than the 30, however you want to look at it. But if all you did was go with the proper order, and again, an uptrend proper order, you stayed mostly long, or you looked to get long, and when the market's in downtrend proper order, or you want to be short or mostly short, you would probably do okay. Now, with that said, we had the bow tie down, as I've talked about quite a bit. Go on the bear market updates for a more accurate update on that. But depends on how aggressive your entry was. It was probably somewhere around 3,000 or maybe a little below it based on that signal. And by the way, as I said earlier, what these moving averages and these or correction with these emerging trend patterns such as the bow tie you want that to come off of major major high 
off a of major, major low. So three-year lows, I don't know if that's enough in this case, because when you back the chart way out, it sure looks like this little bit of a blip on the chart and that we could possibly have a lot more further to go. But I'm not going to be obstinate, and you can see that the moving averages are beginning to come together. So that's a three-year low. I'd like to see a much, much, much longer-term low. I, I, I hope we don't go make a longer-term low, but for terms of this pattern or any emerging trend pattern, I'd like to see them come off of major, major, major lows. So as you can see, the moving averages, the 10 simple and the 20 exponential and the 30 exponential are beginning to come together. And as I often say, and as, as I learned from Greg Morris, no matter how long your exponential moving average is based on the formula, as soon as the close crosses above it, it closes above it, I should say, that moving average will turn up. And that's why those somewhat longer exponential moving averages are catching up quickly. With the bow ties, I have the 10 day simple moving average and then the 20 exponential and 30 exponential. I prefer a 10 day simple for a 10 day simple moving average because because with shorter moving shorter periods of time, I prefer the simple moving average because I like to see a true representation of price. And through a lot of experimenting, I found that this simple moving average interacts really nicely with these longer term exponential moving averages. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, I've talked quite a bit about bow ties in the members area. Now, I know I've beat the dead horse on this quite a bit, but something as simple as weekly bow ties will help to keep you on the right side of the chart, especially if it's a weekly bow tie off of all time highs or a weekly bow tie off of major, major lows, five year, maybe 10 year or more lows, like the 13 year low we saw in 2009. Now, there was quite a bit of lag on that one. There was quite a bit of daily sell signals long before that triggered. So we were buying much earlier than this signal, this weekly signal. But as you can see, even with the lag, the market, I think, tripled or so from that signal. So that in and of itself could keep you on the right side of the market. Now, I'm just showing the major signals off of all-time highs and off of major, major lows. That signal we had in 2016, markets were pretty ugly then. I think if you just blindly held through that, I think that would have been a bad idea. And if memory serves, the Russell got hit pretty hard back then, and it had its own bow tie signal back then. And then again, that 2019 signal was a little bit uglier than the charts that you might think on the charts. Now, what's fascinating is, and I'm glad that I follow up on my stuff, even though it seems like I'm beating a dead horse with this, but if I'm not following up, I, I sometimes I ignore or forget to check on signals. And to my surprise, we do have a weekly bow tie down. So the moving averages have actually caught up with price, but obviously there's quite a bit of lag. And we had a lot of other sell signals, such as the daily sell signal up at 3,000 long before this. And the other thing that kind of fascinated me, by the way, and this is all in the bear market updates, what fascinated me was that we actually had a weekly signal trigger because it's just price-based, okay? But the price dropped so far and so fast, we had the weekly TFM 10% system trigger before a daily bow tie even caught up to the market, which I think was really cool, but I'm a nerd. So here's your weekly bow ties. As you can see, these moving averages have come together and spread out, and then the market has pulled back since then. So a sell somewhere around 2650 would trigger that weekly sell signal. But obviously, we've had a lot of sell signals long before this happened. But I just want to show you bigger picture wise where we are. And it'll be interesting to see how that signal shakes out, and if that is the start of something much, much, much bigger. Again, we did have one back here in 2019, actually 2018, I'm sorry, 2019. And where is that 2018? Correction, that was 2018. I don't know why I keep calling it the 2019 sell-off. Anyway, 
So that was a pretty serious spill, even though it doesn't look like it's that huge. And again, I think that would have been a really bad idea to hold through that slide. Now, as I've been saying quite a bit, we are obviously in a retrace rally, but it's not going to be a route back to the old lows, and it's going to be a bumpy ride higher. And so far, and I don't want to hint at Elliott Wave or anything like that because I don't believe in that kind of stuff, but I will concede that everything works better with trends. So if you're using a moving average or counting waves or whatever you like to do, as long as you're forecast is in the direction of the trend, then you'll do okay. I had one client who was really into it kind of from an academic academic perspective back in 2000, and he decided, or 2009, I forget, he decided to go ahead and trade my trading service, which was all shorts at the time, and I think his first trade was a short, and he absolutely printed money because he was shorting the overall market during this time and he was really doing well. But when the market began to turn, he was still showing a wave count that pointed lower. So the wave counting was fighting the trend and that's when he got into a lot of trouble and I lost contact with him. But I, I do remember telling him, you know, pay off your, pay off your condo and have a place to live for free and then do it again you know there's a lot of problems with being in the right place in the right time and he kind of begs the what's the old saying better to not have money at all than to have it and then have lost it <laughs> i think that's a quote from darian in wall street now one thing i was thinking about as i was putting together my presentation today Getting back to the concept of Landry light, and let's say that dark would be that the high is less than a moving average, and then light or good light would be, as I've illustrated the green here, and that just counts the number of days where the lows are greater than the moving average. But if looking at this little indicator, and this is just a 50 day simple moving average, so lots of lag in that, and using the indicator to count the number of bars of daylight at the bottom, just to illustrate how long the market has had daylight, or as I now call it, Landry light, thanks to one of you guys. Forgive me that, I think it was Mike Peterson. But anyway, so red means that the highs are below the moving average, and green means that the lows are greater than the moving average. And when this turns red, and you could use your favorite moving average, but I like a 50-day simple for this particular exercise. And this is what we're using on a weekly chart too, the weekly Landry light. But it doesn't mean sell the form when you have downside Landry light or it's dark, right? But you certainly wanna pay attention to the fact that the trend might be ending or the market could be in a little bit of trouble. So it's kind of a caution Flag. And it seems like the longer you have daylight to the downside, or Landry light to the downside, gotta get used to saying that, the better the chances of something bad can happen. Now, if you go in and look at, I'm gonna date myself here, but go back to Stocks and Commodities Magazine in 1995, that's hard to say. <laughs> I wrote an article called the 220 EMA breakout system, and that's where the term daylight came back came from uh, the guy read the article and contacted me and he and that's what he dubbed it and now we call it Landry light but if you the, the whole system was basically two bars where you had Landry light and then you got in above a breakout of, on the third bar so I don't know if you could see it on your screens but if you look at that last little caution up here so that if you're using something similar to that, you had two bars of Landry light, but it didn't take out that low. So it would have to actually take out that low. And going back to the prior little breakdown in here, you can see you had two bars of Landry light and it didn't take out that lowest bar. But it's still a caution flag nonetheless, okay? And now we have lots of 
Landry Light to the downside, obviously. And that's where bad things could happen. Now, if we keep rallying and go up and, and hit that moving average, then maybe maybe the market's trying to bottom out a little bit. I wouldn't rush out and buy it right away, though, because I still think it can retrace further higher. But if we use something like this, it does give us a reference point to look at. Thank you. How would you apply and insert the 50-week high 2% line in the stock charts setting? Um, did I answer that already? I think that uh, we are working. I am working with programmers over there to do that, but uh, I don't think that we have the capability just yet. The uh, the Landry light you're seeing down below here, which he calls it Landry lights. So we need to call it Landry light. Uh, this is actually in the platform now, but it hasn't been made public yet. And I just had a meeting with them yesterday, and they're shooting for June or July, I think. To get the stuff out more likely is july i think is what they said anyway so you can see we've had landry life and downside for a while and just like gayard and Baleo said below the 200 day moving average bad things happen well below the 50 day moving average and we're using a concept of daylight here or landry light gotta use the saying that again bad things can happen so that's something that i thought about Anyway, once again, last time this happened, I guess December 2018, as I've been saying throughout this presentation, it was a little worse than it looks there. And then now again, we have downside ledger light. Oh, this is the weekly chart, okay? So you will have a little lag, obviously, in this. And this is why the TFM system doesn't wait for the Landry light to the downside. It just says, okay, you close with a 50 week moving average. And if you're also more than 10% away the 50 week closing high, then it's time to get out of the market. So getting back to the $64,000, is, is this the bottom? I don't think so. In a word, no. But the market could do whatever it wants. And as a trend follower, my job is to follow along. There's a lot of people go back several weeks long before this thing began to rally off its lows that were calling a bottom. And they were wrong by quite a bit. I'm sure they're gonna tell you how right they were. And that's something I addressed in prior webinars. So don't get caught up with the guru bragging, which if I ever do get a little too full of myself, please let me know because I just follow along, right? Now, not to confuse the issue with facts, but I think there's a lot of things that have to unwind both internally and externally. And yeah, the market does look past some of these things because the market looks to the future. The market says, well, at least for now, it's starting to say, well, we might be okay. We might get through all this mess. But I just think it's a little bit more complicated than just a big old do-over because a lot of things have to unwind. I still think there's some selling or another wave of selling that's yet to hit this market as people begin to possibly bail out. Now, time does heal all wounds. And if you go and look at some of my stuff, like bow ties and first thrusts off a of major, major basis at major low levels, or at really low levels, like all time lows for stocks, on an individual basis, a lot of the supply kind of works its way through the system, through death and estate settlement, settlement. And you know, as Tom McClellan's mom said, people buy and sell stocks for a variety of reasons. So those variety of reasons kind of work their way through the system. When I put this death in here a few days ago, I really wasn't even thinking about the virus thing, but that that is something that's a little morbid to think about, but those people who passed, obviously their estates uh, will be settled. I don't know if it's enough in number to, to worry about, but this is just a general thing. And I didn't mean to point it to the team. And hopefully YouTube is not scanning my presentation. They they started, if you started mentioning the, let's just say that thing that's going on right now, so they don't pick it up. They start writing algorithm rhythms to take you off the channel if you if you mention it. I guess they just didn't want any fear monger or anything. But getting back to time, healing all wounds. People sometimes need money, right? 
And maybe right now there is a little bit of a need money selling that could be occurring because the future is uncertain. And then, like I've been saying recently, some people have contacted me that are fairly close to retirement. They were pretty excited about their investments about a month or so ago, but all of a sudden that has changed quickly. And the one example I give is my friend from Mississippi. I'm making 1K per day before 1K. And it's like, well, I think he's now beginning to reevaluate how great that 401K is, at least for now. For a while, he was thinking, why am I bothering with my day job? Now, one thing that I've been kind of harping on a little bit and kind of using this interchangeably with shorts is that bear markets are a lot harder than they look. And obviously these retraces, this is something I thought about this morning. We've been thinking about a lot. I've been thinking about a lot because it's been brutal, but these retrace rallies, as you know, if you short, can really, really hurt you. Now, I noticed the post yesterday, but there's been a few people who have talked with me about this, and I've seen a lot of this stuff firsthand. I would tell you, if you're a little bit more seasoned trader, don't let the novices who are bottom fishing aggravate you. They're learning a very expensive lesson. People are going in and they're making a lot of money playing these bounces and some of these issues. And they're feeling like geniuses. And, and as I think I said in the Facebook group, it reminds me of a story years back. I had a boat and I'd sold a boat and the dinghy was rather expensive. It was an inflatable dinghy. And I decided to keep the dinghy because it wasn't worth throwing it in with the boat because the way negotiations went. Anyway, long story endless. I sold the dinghy separately, and I forget how much money we had from that. Maybe a thousand bucks, better than the poke in the eye, right? And anyway, I told my wife, I said, we should take $200 and run over to the casino and have shoot some dice and spend the night and have a really good time and parlay this money. Well, obviously, I was joking about parlaying the money, but I thought it would be kind of fun to kind of be willing to piss away a couple hundred dollars on entertainment. And we won, I forget the exact amount. We either won a thousand or came home with a thousand after all was said and done. But anyway, we won a little money shooting dice. And on the way home, I told my wife, I said, this is the most expensive trip ever. She goes, well, what do you mean? We made like a grand, right? And I'm like, no, you will be back. So the market is a horrible teacher as I preach ad nauseum. So don't let these people bother you. They're going to get crushed soon enough, okay? Now, another thing that I'm seeing quite a bit is most don't understand the nature of the beast that they're dealing with. Picking up nickels in front of a bulldozer or picking up nickels in front of a steamroller, old Wall Street adage. And that just means that you're going in and making some money and feeling good pretty good about yourself but you have no idea how dangerous what you're doing is and i'm seeing a lot of novices out there going in and stocks like zoom which are stupid volatile and they might be making three or four points and feeling pretty smart but the risk are just so out of line they might be risking three to one in other words, let's say they make three points. Well, that stock could easily go nine points against them before they make three points. So it's a lot more complicated than it might look. And if you are one of the fortunate people who has been scalping lately, so to speak, and making a lot of money, I would, I would look hard at how you're making that money. I don't want to mess you up. If you're making money, that's great. But just make sure you're not picking up those nickels in front of a steamroller. And if you get crushed on a few trades and give back two or three weeks of scalping, you'll get it, believe me. I think the easy part might be done. The market is gyrating back and forth now. Even though it gyrated quite a bit in the slide, it mostly went down, as I'll show you once again. 
But shorts, like everything, I suppose, work well until they don't. And trend following works well until it doesn't, too, you know. But the short side has been harder as of late. Now, if we look at a couple of big short winners that we have left over in the portfolio, the ACGL triggered way up here. And then we had a nice slide making you think, wow, this is easy peasy over 50% gains. And then you get a retrace rally, you know, you drop an F bomb or so. And then the market sells off a little bit. You start to feel pretty good again. And then what happens? Well, it begins to rally back up like it's doing right now. There used to be a saying, the bloom is off the rose, and I think that's more like for uptrends, but the same concept applies to downtrends. And BLDR, another one of our big winners on the short side, you can see that we had a nice little sell signal back in March, market implodes, once again, feeling kind of easy peasy, big old fat retrace rally. You're thinking, ah, screw this, and then the market, or stock in this case, sells off nicely, feeling pretty good again. And then we're having another one of those retrace rallies. A lot harder, by the way, to hold a position longer term on the short side. But in the trading service, what I do is I'm running this core methodology. I'm running this model. I want to show how it works, and I want to adhere best I can to specific rules. And I'll often do things like exit a position, at least in the portfolio, even though I might still actually have the position in my own portfolio. But I try to track things as mechanically as possible. So the reason that we're not doing things like, for instance, in this one, which we talked about in the Facebook group, I actually flipped out of the position for some options last Friday. So the options will probably go to zero. I hope they don't, but if they do, no big deal. I still made the lion's share on the position. But before I digress too far, I think the, the bloom is off the rose, so to speak, or the easy part may be done for now. And now we have our work cut out for us. And that's why I haven't shown many shorts as of late. In the last few days, I haven't showed any setups, just kind of waiting for this market to find its way and then of course waiting for setups that i think are worth taking so overall market obviously and here's the thing too i'm kind of backing into but you notice those two charts looked exactly alike and then now lo and behold the overall market looks exactly alike so i think that stocks are being held hostage by the overall market in other words everything is kind of moving in the same direction so once again s p 500 kind of easy peasy and then, of course, you've had this slide, and then you had the retrace, rally back up. Not so easy peasy. Okay. Any questions on any of that? Hopefully that made sense. I think, I don't think we're at a low just yet, but check back often. I think, again, I think it's gonna take a little time for this stuff to unwind. But who knows, the market can do whatever it wants. I will be, as a trend follower, a little late to call a bottom, but first I'm gonna have to see some sort of signals, such as bow ties on a daily chart, and maybe something a little bit longer term too. And ideally, I just don't wanna see, or I don't wanna get too excited about signals at a top, even though they might work over the short term. One thing you'll find as a trader is it can be kind of lonely. It does help to have others. I have thrown out some ideas before, and you guys have kind of criticized them. And I realized that, well, maybe it was intuition, as they said in Market Wizards, and not intuition. I've also picked up a lot of great guys from you guys, great ideas, that is, from you guys in Facebook. So I would encourage you to become a member of DaveLearner.com which will allow you access to the Facebook group, which is free, but you have to be a gold member. And that's just to keep the riffraff out. And all kidding aside, we really have been pretty good and focused. I did put some rules in the group and I hopefully won't have to enforce them. But so far, we've been a, a great bunch and we've been helping each other out. And it's been a lot of fun for me. And for the people who are already in the group, it's been great. People ask a question before I get around the answer and two or three of you guys have chime in. So I appreciate that. 
and you could ask for help there. It's okay to ask for help. I don't know why, but this is a business where people are afraid to ask for help. I get a lot of help from a lot of people. And we're also pointing out signs and signals as we see them, things such as opening gap reversals, even though it's a little bit outside of the methodology, and then shorter term market timing and things like that. And it's kind of, everybody has their own little niche or niche that they follow. And it's kind of fun to watch everybody do what they do. And again, I'll throw out opening gap reversals and then I'm gonna parlay a small account into $4 million. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> so far it hasn't gone so well. So here's some URLs if you're interested in all that. Now, let's go ahead and open it up for individual questions on anything or uh, questions on individual stocks. And then I'll shift gears here. We'll take a look at what's going on in the overall market and be happy to analyze your favorite stock picks. All right, let's start with the with the major MIGs and the S&P 500. These are just morning starting issue groups. So the S&P 500 working its way off of its lows in here. Salvatore is mention, mentioning a stock that's as a dividend and says it has a great dividend. Well, I would be really careful buying a stock in part or in or because it has a great dividend. And the reason it has a great dividend is because price has dropped and there might be something wrong with the company. And that company could easily cut that dividend. Or let's say a stock's paying something crazy like a 30% dividend and that stock drops 30%, then you're kind of breaking even. And before you get that 30% dividend or whatever, the stock cancels its dividend because something's wrong with the company. So technical analysis, at least the trend following, assumes that the market knows something that you do not. So S&P 500, like I said earlier, looking pretty good in here, not a bad day so far today. You know, you don't want to confuse the issue with facts. Yesterday I said, boy, I'm having a hard time believing this market's going to rally in front of a long holiday weekend because a lot of stuff could happen. Remember, tomorrow there is no trading. So I'm kind of amazed that we're trading higher by this much today, 2.2% 2, 2. 2 change in spite of the market being closed for the next three days. And as you can see, these bow tie moving averages are coming together. If we do come together and have a bow tie buy, I wouldn't rush out and buy that signal, but it might be a little piece of the puzzle that at least over the intermediate term, the market is trying to, to make the turn. One day at a time, I think is what I'm trying to say. But so far, market retracing higher. Again, it's been kind of in a zigzag, A, B, C higher. I do think forget about all the signals for a second, I do think that this market could actually retrace pretty high or quite a ways and still be in trouble, maybe even as high as 3,000 or so, but we'll know it when we see it. Borrowing a line from Justice Potter Stewart. <laughs> he must have done a lot of research before he came up with that line. NASDAQ Composite, not quite as strong as a piece today, kind of little indecision so far. But moving averages, as you can see, coming together there, we get it to point back up one day at a time. You know, you back the chart way out again, it's something like the NASDAQ. It looks like it could just be in the early phases of rolling over, especially if you go like a weekly chart. And you can see that you're at really, really high levels. This really illustrates my concern about a, a bottom at high levels. I don't know. I'm more excited about a bottom at really low levels coming off of decade plus lows or whatever. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Yeah, keep the um, keep the questions coming. Russell 2000, as you know, and as I've complained forever, the Russell really lagged behind the rest of the market. And that's been kind of gnawing away at me in a long time. And a couple of you guys have emailed me to thank me for pointing that out as much as I did. But the Russell 2000, like the other indices, so far just kind of a thrust, pullback thrust, a little ABC correction. And even though it's having a pretty good day today, up 5%, so far, I think the big blue arrow here and everywhere still points down. Let's take a look at gold commodity. 
gold the commodity has been all over the place but now it's trying to break out again and if it closes right here it'll be closing at multi-year highs i don't know how far this gld contract goes yeah it goes all the way back to here so not quite all-time highs in gold still has a way to go and i'm not sure where the contract is if you look at like maybe the continuous contract going way back in time uh, when was silver at 50 bucks yeah okay so silver well way back in 2010 it was back or 2011 was back at 50 bucks 40 something at least by the way gold obviously outperforming silver here as you go through these sectors again most kind of look like the overall market sharp sell-offs i mean something like energy big retrace rally looks like it's going to go back to old lows ditto for metals and mining and pretty much everything out there gold stocks one exception trying to go back to their old highs kind of that v-shaped type recovery the only problem is it's a little dangerous to buy in now because it's overbought and it's kind of hard for those v-shaped recoveries to sustain themselves as i talk about quite often but anyway, as you go through all these sectors, even like the foods so far just appear to be pulling back. And I think this could be set up a new round of shorts, but only, of course, on entries. Don't fade the market. Don't fight the trend, okay? With drip investing, it has outperformed the market big time since it went public 13 years ago. Are you talking about dividend reinvestments? I think that's something that that'll work really well until it doesn't you know kind of that old the joke I always make that'll work until it don't um the market has to come back you know with any type of of buy and hold type of investment if the market doesn't come back then you could be into a lot then you could be in a lot of trouble and it might take years and years and years for the market to come back and you might end up needing that money somewhere in between okay main M-A-I-N. Let's go ahead and open it up for individual questions. Yeah, see, I would not buy this stock because the big blue arrow points lower. Yeah, it has a dividend, but that is not a reason in and of itself to buy the stock. And so far, I think the stock is in trouble and it's just kind of pulling back in here. So don't fight the trend. Um, if this thing, if you get some sort of buy signal in here that you like, and you also like the fact they have a dividend, then by all means buy it it's tell is a potential first thrust i'll tell you right now no um let me back the chart way out and see no i don't see it here at least not yet let's see if i can zoom in enough i mean okay when you zoom in like this yeah it's run from its lows but look at this hv 230 I probably wouldn't touch that, or I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole, you know? When the HV gets that high, anything over triple digits, you have to evaluate. Now, I know lately most everything has had triple-digit HV, so, but no, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch something like this. I mean, especially after this big old free fall. Ideally, with a first thrust, like everything, you want something to go sideways for a long, long time and then begin to roll up as opposed to this sharp recovery like this let me think if i could find one for you years ago i remember cnx being a pretty big winner that was way back in time let's see yeah you know notice like right way back here when this stock took off it bottomed out for a long long time and then you had a transitional setup I think it's probably too early to start looking for transitional setups and individual issues. You know, maybe in some of these areas that got beaten up really hard, like the energies possibly, but I don't think it's time just yet for those, okay? You're welcome, Sal. For the first time in a long time, I am somewhat bullish on gold, but no setups to be found, probably why I hate the metals. <laughs> Yeah, you know, let's take a look at those gold stocks. We have a minute here. And see if there's anything worth looking at here. And let's sort them by volume just so we look at the thicker ones first. Eh, 90 days fine, 30 days fine, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, you know, these gold stocks, it's, it's there's no setup here. It went straight down and then it went straight back up. So there's no setup 
there. You know, they all kind of look the same. They're all kind of going straight back up to their old highs and they're all over the place. You know, maybe this Newmont, when it begins to pull back in here or something that's broken out the new highs, but the way the methodology works, you're not gonna get, you know, you're basically looking for thrust, pullback, thrust, pullback, rinse and repeat, or transitional setups off of major, major lows. And all of these stocks so far haven't really set up like that. NG maybe might set up at some point in time, but the idea is not to try to catch a V-shaped recovery or something like this. The methodology won't catch every move in every stock, right? Okay, you just have to learn to live with that. And sometimes, as I often say, you can't kiss all the women, unless I guess you're Harvey Weinstein, but you get in trouble for that, right? So yeah, I would let these stocks continue to break out and see if they keep breaking out and see if it's worthwhile going after them. Why is that in there? That should not be there in there. Okay, VRTX. Okay. My concern with this one is it's sort of all over the place. And look at the look at the range in here. It's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And it kind of got past its old highs, as you can see, but then it kind of came back in already. Okay. The HV is not completely nuts, but I don't think the HV, because HV is on a closing basis, the HV doesn't fully, what word am I looking for, justify or whatever the, if I can make this thing work, the amount of volatility. So this thing is a high of 230, so it's got like a 30 point range in here which I guess you could argue, well, it's a $200 stock, but still 30 points is pretty crazy. So I would pass on that. I mean, if it broke out and started trending nicely and pulled back, then for sure. But it's kind of all over the place. Okay, it has never cut its dividend in all its history. Okay, well, you know, who, who went out of bank, who went out of business? It was a bank established in the 1800s. In the 2009 bear market, you could argue that, well, you know, this this uh, bank's been around for what 200 years. You know, they're going to be around the next 200 years. So, you know, things go south really fast, and that's something that I talked about in the last update. I mean, you know, what happens if Carol Baskin comes along? You know. <laughs> PPD. What if Carol Baskin pulls her money? All right, PPD. Are we going to short this? What are we going to do with this for Donald? I think it looks like it's in trouble. I, I wouldn't buy it, but it's really too many days in the pullback. And that's the other thing, kind of backing into something here. Usually on the short side, you don't you only want a few days of the pullback. And then I think I have my scan set to 10 or 12 days. I forget how many. But after that, then it's kind of like becomes choppy and wide and loose. and Ideally, on the short side, let's take a look at like the spiders or that VLDR or whatever. VLDR would be a good example. On the short side, in this one, notice that it, it only pulled back one, two, three, four days before it began to implode. In an ideal world, it would just pull back like one day before it implodes. And what that does is traps the most amount of people on the wrong side of the market. So like that day there, if it sold off and took out that low quickly, it would trap a lot of people. But usually several days on the short side, I prefer several days on the short side when you play the pullback or something, okay? A net as a short for Mr. Ed, A N E T. This is kind of all over the place, okay? Uh, I would prefer something that's a little cleaner. I also would prefer something that's at high levels. And this is one that I mentioned in the Landry List. It's okay for me to mention stocks in the Landry List, but you guys can't talk about them. So, and actually this one isn't a perfect example because it's still not, it's just coming off of high levels, but it did have a significant drop in here. I'm still looking, even though it's getting harder and harder to find, something that's just begun to drop, kind of like that's, uh, 
DLDR, you know, and the ACGL, something that still looking for something like up here that it's yet to crack, and and most things have already cracked, so that's going to get harder and harder to find. But that that one's kind of all over the place. Try to find something that's still in a fairly early phases of breaking down, and then if we get into a bit of a prolonged bear market, then we'll be forced to trade things that or in extended trends. So right now we're still looking for, we're not gonna find the transitional patterns because it's done, but we still wanna find like things that are just getting into their second leg lower and not things that have already been decimated. GSX looks really good if it pulls back uh, as a short, because yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. In fact, let's take a look at the bow tie moving averages. I've been watching this one, and as of right now, it is setting up. So that's the kind of thing we're looking at. I would, not to confuse the issue with facts, but I would like to see what these people do just to know what I'm up against. But, Zach, that's a good-looking setup. We've been talking about this one in the Facebook group, okay? Yeah, good eye. Good eye on that. And what I like about it is, as I just was preaching, well, first of all, we got plenty of volume, so we know we can trade it, we can short it. And it's coming off of these high levels. Now, I, I would, again, not to confuse the issue with facts, I'd like to see why they are at such high levels. Oh, China education. Oh, okay. All right, well, that's interesting. Well, okay. Yeah, I love this stock. I'll give you a high five on that, Zach. Good eye on that one, uh, for sure. And yeah, this one has come up in Facebook already. But yeah, you you could easily see this as a short and and the uh, probably core trading service soon. So, but yeah, I've been watching it. I like this bow tie. I like this. See, it has this overhead supply to it. Okay. So, and as I just said, if something triggers after one or two bars, so if we take out today's low, okay, then this thing could be in a lot of trouble. And at the least, if your stop is somewhere up in this range it's going to have a hard time getting through this overhead supply so yeah absolutely on that one i don't know if i've ever given you a high five so high five there zach mcd which hat that's going to be mickey d's right let's back the chart way out yeah i mean it's made such an extreme move lower look at that mcdonald's has an hv of 80. i never thought i'd live long enough to see that that's crazy the problem is that so many days in this retrace rally but yeah, it looks like it's kind of running out of steam. And I think that the, I think this leg is going to win, but it has retraced probably too far to go after it as a short. So let me interview myself. Does it still look like it's, does it still look like it's in trouble? He tried to say, yes, would I personally short it? No, but I hear you, Peter. It, it could be in trouble. For possible longs, what about IPOs that have crashed and burned and now showing signs of coming back to life? that's possible i do i do like these ipo phoenix type of stocks meaning that they go down and they bottom out for a while and then they begin to rise from the ashes so i think you're on to something unfortunately for now unless you're talking about something much shorter term we can look at those too I'm not really seeing anything coming off of lows to get too excited about in here. I do like that GSX just came up again. Let's see what we got. So, yeah, I think in theory what you're saying makes a lot of sense. But so far in practice, we haven't seen it. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the more recent IPOs real quick. Keep the questions coming. We have a few minutes left. So if we look at the more recent IPOs, is that what you're referring to? So yeah, I hear you. And something like like PPD is bottomed out and coming back up. But for me to buy this, it would actually have to make new highs. Okay. Now I think that would be okay. I'm not saying to be a safe trade, but I think if you start seeing these IPOs break out after a big slide like this PPD, it might be worth a shot. By the way, it's kind of cool. What's the what's the rule? You can't buy till five days, and that fifth day would have to be a new high, new closing high. And there's some other caveats there too. But just looking at that, here's your fifth day or your five day closing high. 
and it never did trigger. So you would have stayed out of that. But a re-trigger or a trigger, I should say, could be worthwhile. So maybe keep an eye out for that type of thing. But yeah, I agree with you in theory, but so far I'm just not seeing anything to get too excited about in the IPOs. And I've been watching them because you guys pay me to do that. TDOC, TDOC, short, more thrust lower, TDOC. I'm not seeing it as a short. It's a little wide and loose. I mean, if anything, it looks like a pullback, but it's too wide and loose. It's up, down, it's up, it's down, it's up, down. Jackie Mason stock. You too young to know who that is. You have to Google him. Do a YouTube on him. All right, any more questions? Any more stock picks? While we're in an impasse, obviously I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending today. I appreciate you taking time on your busy schedule. Look like more and more people are finding the show. They just haven't had time to promote it lately. But if you watch it on YouTube, you go to my homepage, there should be a registration link toward the bottom of the page. To those who celebrate, happy Easter. To everyone else, happy Easter, Chris. To everyone else, happy Friday. Enjoy your day off. Have fun uh, going from your living room to your bedroom to your kitchen. <laughs> Everybody, please be safe out there. Stay sane. <laughs> And good luck with everything, and best of luck with your trading. May the trend be with you. Thank you so much.